Hello everyone, this is a repeat of a workshop which we ran in school last year for parents about how to raise resilient, highly effective and happy people which of course is vital in leading to success academically and in life. So we couldn't wish for anything more because we for our children really. So in this session, we're going to look at the importance of your child's mental well-being and their outlook on life and the impact that this has on learning and everything and how as parents we can support positive mental well-being through modelling and putting strategies in place. So we'll be looking at resilience and well-being, how we can support our children to bounce back from setbacks and how to keep a perspective on problems which will then help our children to deal with problems rationally. So it's really interesting, there's lots of reading about happiness and lots of the research tells us that only 10% is based on external factors, so things going wrong in life, um, poverty, hardship will affect your happiness. And 90% is down to your resilience and the way that you think. And this is really interesting. The research also shows that actively choosing to have a resilient and positive mindset does require effort and does take practice, but we can change our mindset. So as Dr. Andy Cope, who's an educator and author says, as a parent, you are the most significant influencer and important part of your child's life. You are shaping their world. So if you have a little think now, maybe discuss with your partner, what areas of behavior or organization in your household leads to stress? your stress or the, the stress of your child? What makes steam come out of your ears? What makes you lose your temper? So common problems might be arguments between siblings, tidying your room, the overuse of technology at home, not wanting to do home learning or not wanting to go to bed on time. And we'll, we'll revisit how we can overcome those issues a little bit later on. So as the author Stephen Covey says, we should always start with the end in mind. If we want to improve things in our family or work life, we should start with thinking about our, our goal. What behaviors do you hope to see in your child? What do you wish for for your child? So if you have a little think about those characteristics that you would love other people to describe your child as. And parents tend to say things like this, to have a strong sense of self, to know their strengths and see areas improvement as a positive challenge. So they are actually quite resilient. They are self-regulated, they're organized. They, they don't let external problems affect them negatively. They can get on with it, keep a perspective. They don't have a big, a big drama over something very small. They have empathy for others. So they, they are kind. They are kind to their, themselves and others. And all of these characteristics actually really lead to having a happy mindset. So now you've thought of the characteristics you would like for your child that, that would mean that you wouldn't need to worry about them. Let's have a look at some concrete steps and tips which could really support this. So if we look at the, the makeup of the brain and the hormones within our brain that are released so that the stress hormone cortisol is triggered by insults rejections maybe aggressive loud behavior particularly public 
behavior where somebody for example might shout at you or a parent might get really angry with a child and cortisol then floods our body it makes us feel terrible and it stops and it blocks rational thinking so if we've made a mistake and somebody gets really cross with us we can't think rationally what should should we have done differently or or we we're not really sorry about it now cortisol can stay in our bodies for up to two hours oxytocin is a hormone which is triggered through nice things like when someone says a kind word or praises you sadly this only stays in our blood our bloodstream for up to five minutes so as parents we can really help our children stay calm and deal with problems through how we we model our own behavior so if we just reflect for a moment how do we how, how do we help our children get over things to not overreact when things go wrong what what do we do well, we absolutely need to model this ourselves. What is our behavior as parents when things go wrong? Do we stay calm? Do we think rationally? Or is our stress hormone released and we go into panic mode? I've just got a, a short video clip to play, which is um, based on Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Seven Habits. Habit one is be proactive. Let's look at something called the circle of concern and the circle of influence. The circle of concern consists of all the things that are out of your control, like the weather, politics, what people think of you, the economy, other people's mistakes, and other people's opinions. The circle of influence consists of all the things you can control, your attitude, what you read, what skills you learn, your enthusiasm, how you spend your free time and who you spend it with, your habits and hobbies and so on. With that said, there are two ways to live life. You can either be reactive or proactive. Reactive people complain about the things that are out of their control. Their environment and outside forces affect their performance and their mood. Additionally, they don't take action or ownership of the things that they can control. And then you have the other type of person. They are proactive. This type of person realizes that their decisions determine their life, not their conditions. Proactive people don't complain about things they can't control. Additionally, they take action to improve the things that they can control. Proactive people understand that sometimes we may not have complete control over a certain situation, but we can control how we respond to a situation. So let's look at an example of how a proactive and a reactive person responds to the same situation. Two people take a test and then they both fail. One blames the teacher and gives up. The other takes responsibility and ownership, studies harder, and tries to improve themselves. The reactive person complains about how bad the teacher is, and the proactive person asks, what can I do? They look at themselves first instead of blaming and complaining. Don't focus on what you can't control. Focus on what you can control. Take responsibility, and keep in mind, as you become more proactive within your circle of influence, it grows bigger. You bring more power into your life. Even if you only implement one habit out of these seven habits I'm going to go over, make it this one. This one alone can have a huge impact on your life. In life, you either act or you're acted upon. So I think that's a really interesting video, isn't it? To, to be aware and modeling ourselves and to our children that some things are beyond our control and there's not much we can do about that, but it's up to us to choose how we react to that. So, and it's interesting to think of different people who you know, if you think of someone who you know has a really positive energy, very proactive mindset, whatever challenges they face, they, they keep going, they, they overcome them and they're really nice to be around, they find solution, they're, they're problem solvers. 
And then you can probably think of someone who isn't quite as resilient and tends to let minor setbacks ruin their day. So something small might happen first thing on a morning and that's it for the rest of the day. And they might always have something to, to moan about. And think about how you feel when you're around either of these people. So children learn how to, how to control their reactions a lot of it actually through observing how their parents deal with problems and setbacks. If their parents are reflective, then they will be more reflective. So if, let's just have a think about a scenario. Your child comes home and seems upset. She tells you a friend snatched her book and shouted at her, telling her to go away. How would you feel? How do you react? What would you do? Now, obviously, we really love our children, don't we? So, and we feel what they feel. So you don't need to feel bad if, if you wanted to overreact to this. But what would you do? Would you march into school, find the child and then snatch something from them, see how they like it? Would you get straight onto the phone and call the other parents really crossly? Would you tell your child it must have been their fault, which isn't great either? Or would you model to your child how to deal with this setback in another way? So a really positive way to, to be solution focused is to stay calm, even if you're not feeling calm, to, to appear calm, listen carefully, breathe listen to the full story without making judgments. In school, if we deal with any, any problems between children, we always fully investigate the whole story before we make a decision because lots of new information can often come up. So take your own reactions and emotions out of this. This, this isn't about you. I know it feels like it is when you know, you're a parent. You can show sympathy in your listening through your body language. But if you stay calm and if you do not react, you're much more likely to get the full story. If you get really upset, they might shut down and not want to admit certain things or not want to tell you certain aspects because of your reaction. Then you can model thinking out loud, okay, this is a problem. I understand you are very upset. Let's have a think about the best way to solve this together. So you're kind of coming up with solutions together. So you're wondering, okay, could we let the teacher know and ask them to help us investigate? And you, your child can then see you're coming up with solutions and you're, you're very calm and level-headed. And then they will use this strategy in other areas of life. So strategies for encouraging a positive and resilient mindset. I, I wonder, some, something parents talk about, all parents talk about often is mornings can be a bit crazy and hectic, can't they? I, I wonder, what, what do your mornings look like first thing? Think about the first thing that you said to your child this morning. Think about a typical morning for you. Now, very interestingly, research shows that the first three minutes on a morning when you greet your child after school and the last three minutes at night can set the tone of their mood. So those three key points in the day. So if you start with a positive mindset, they will be more positive, which will spread throughout the day. So just something to be mindful of when, if you're going to wake them up on, on a morning. So hopefully you're not having to go in there stressed and ah, look at your room, you know. Planning and organisation really helps because I think sometimes as parents, if our children are disorganised, deep down we're feeling a bit guilty that 
we've not been a bit more organized the night before or we've not encouraged them or taught them to be more organized as well so plan together the routine and the schedule what time do you go to bed what are the expectations that you must do before you go to bed brush your teeth put your ipad on charge or whatever it might be get your school uniform out ready so that then really helps a good positive morning start as well some people like to put little charts and stickers up so another tip for encouraging a positive mindset with children is thinking about your dinner time conversations. Often because in our families we're all there to support each other and sometimes dinner times can be an opportunity to, to offload about the day or something that's that's gone wrong, which is, is okay because obviously we're, everyone's there to support. But if we can start to encourage a positive way of thinking, that can change our mindset. So if you could have almost conversation starters, like you do it, like you have at some restaurants on cards, you know, tell me something good and tell me something fantastic that happened in your day. So your children are really having to think of something that they enjoyed and then something great and they're being much more enthusiastic and you should share something as well. Um, to, to encourage and celebrate resilience, don't just talk about what, what you've done well, really promote that discussion about what have you found challenging today? And, and mum and dad should share this as well and, and, and older siblings talk about what challenges have you overcome and really celebrate the fact that, wow, you found that maths really hard and you didn't enjoy it, but you kept going and you overcame it. And that's better than getting 10 out of 10, actually, because that, if you have that skill throughout life, it will really help you to be successful. To encourage kindness, because when we're kind to other people, it, it makes us happy as well. So what have you done that's kind today? Tell me one thing that you've done that kind of, mums and dads, again, need to get in on the conversation as well. And, and the children be really interested to hear. It does make you reflect on, on yourself and you think, oh, what, what have I done? And it encourages them because they know, oh, we'll be talking about that tomorrow. So they're a bit more aware of their kind act. So structures and routines that you put in place as a, as a parent really can increase responsibility and independence, but the children might need help with this to get going so it's not too overwhelming. So maybe smaller steps for washing up, train them first, make sure they know how to do it. So you're not suddenly thinking, come on, you should be able to wash everything up by now. Okay. So when you plan your morning routine, it, it's good to talk about it together as, as a family. Uh, make sure you all agree on what you need to do. And talk about it when you're calm. Don't, don't do it when you're stressed because your morning routine's not, not gone well. You could write it down. You could agree on your roles, all of your roles, because maybe there might be something that the parents need to help with in order for the, the children to carry out their full routine so it's not too overwhelming. So just a little summary of the, the tips that we've touched on today in this workshop is really uh, as parents and families and individuals accept that you can control your reactions but not always situations. We have the, the power to to stop when something happens and think, how shall I react to that? But that does take practice. Parents are our greatest influencers of children, lead by example. Practice liking people and modding, model liking people. Speak about people as if they're in the room because we don't know what difficulties people are facing. Model to your children overcoming difficulties and understand that emotions are contagious. If we're in a grumpy mood, that might spread. If we're in a happy mood, think about our energy. That's spreading positive energy. And let go of things that happened in the past, that they are in the past. Don't give yourself a hard time about it. Practice putting a positive spin on things. Of course, it is okay. We do teach the children that all emotions are, are good, they are fine, and they are normal because we're human beings, so we should not suppress 
emotions, but we just need to think about how we how we handle them. Enjoy the moment. Do take time, maybe at dinner time, at the end of each day or throughout the day even better. Reflect on the good things that have happened to you each day. Maybe it's a conversation for bedtime with the children. What's something really nice that's happened to you so they're going to bed with a happy thought. And remember, quality time together and experience builds happiness, not objects and not gifts. Make sure the children, make sure you have plenty of downtime, device free, and ensure plenty of sleep, balanced diet and exercise, and really find those quality connections for, for children with friends away from devices. So I hope that you've found a few tips useful and you've got something to take away that you might like to try out at home. Please do, do let me know if you've got any further suggestions that we could share with parents. Thank you.